Well, hey, you guys. So listen, it's human nature to look at other people's circumstances and wish you had what they had. But one thing that I've been reminded of recently is that even high income earners struggle to build wealth. So just because, again, a lot of money is coming into your checking account every month doesn't mean that it's going toward things that will set you up for long term success. And by the way, if you have been curious about this, be sure to check out my episode on five reasons wealthy people are living paycheck to paycheck after this. So stewarding or managing your money wisely boils down to good habits and consistent behavior. I mean, I see six-figure earners who struggle to make their next payday, and I see lower income earners reach a million-dollar net worth over the long term when they hit retirement. So let's talk about how to actually build wealth on a high income and stick around to hear me share my number one tip when it comes to building wealth on a higher income. First, let's talk about the common roadblock that many higher income earners face. This is something I see a lot in the medical field or with people who work in law or even with a graduate degree. And this is student loan debt, yes. Now I get it, it can feel unavoidable if you're interested in pursuing a certain career path, but in general, you guys, this general attitude of like, well, I'll just take out a loan and it's fine. And once I score a high paying job out there and I make a lot of money, then I'll pay all the debt off quickly. It'll be fine. There won't be a problem. But the problem is life happens and maybe you get married or you have kids quicker than you expected to. Or maybe you end up needing to buy a house or a car during your years of schooling. I mean, I have talked to people, you guys, constantly that this is the problem. I talked to a chiropractor the other day on The Ramsey Show and she was wanting to stay home with the kids. And she was like, well, I'm about to have my second baby and I wanna stay home. And she still owed over $200,000 in student loan debt. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to tell you. Like, this is so difficult. So. Again, this life happens and people don't consider that. And so what happens is again, expenses can go up and then it delays this idea of paying off debt. So for a lot of people, it ends up leading to more debt over their lifetime. You know, you had a mortgage, a car loan, you know, credit card balance of maybe a wedding or a honeymoon or maybe just life. And then before you know it, your $250,000 salary is getting eaten up by payments every single month which is why I highly recommend making debt pay off your first priority, no matter what career you're in or salary that you have. Because the best way to do this, you guys, the most effective way to get out of debt is what we teach is the debt snowball method. And this is where you pay off your smallest debt first. So list out all of your payments, all of your debts, and pay off the smallest debt first. And this really does build momentum. And you're gonna be cutting expenses, you're gonna get side hustles, you're gonna do whatever you can to pay this debt off quickly. Do whatever it takes. And you'll be amazed at how much further along your paycheck goes when debt is not around and it's not stealing your income. I mean, you actually have your income and you're like, wow, this actually feels like a substantial income because if you're a high earner, it is. So get debt out of your life. Which brings me to number two, stick to boring old school investing strategies, AKA proven investment strategies. So here's the deal. Anytime you start making more money, so whether you've changed jobs, you got a promotion, I mean, it can feel limitless. It's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And it's a great thing, but you have to be careful not to spend it all on some get rich quick advice because you're going to see something and people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, just do this and do that. And it's so easy. So listen, just stick to the basics, you guys. Don't do crypto, don't go and invest in NFTs, no investing in collectibles or overpriced artwork or designer shoes or handbags, like none of that, okay? Go to tried and true investing strategies. And one of the best things you can do is once you're out of debt and you have an emergency fund, is invest 15% of your income into retirement and you put it into tax advantage retirement accounts. So this is things like a 401k match, a Roth IRA. If your work offers a Roth 401k, do that. And so again, it's boring. It's not as exciting and fun and flashy, but over time, you guys, this is how people build wealth. And if you want to make sure that you, again, are going to have money for decades down the road in retirement, the boring route is usually the right route. But don't take that first step of investing and just call it a day. It can be a little bit more nuanced than that. So the third thing that you need to make sure that you do when you're building wealth with a high income is to stretch your investments. So invest to a point where you feel maybe a little bit of pain. So if all you ever do is invest 15% of your income 
No matter what, you may not reach your full wealth building potential. So be sure to try to level up those percentages again once you've paid off the house, kids' college funds are funded, all of this, then go and revisit your investing. And maybe you've maxed out those traditional retirement accounts and you look into maybe getting you know, paid for real estate or doing other things, that's fine at that point. But again, making sure that you don't go something that doesn't have a long track record. So usually investing in the market and real estate are two great bets, but you'll use your money to do both of those things. Now, the fourth thing that I recommend doing if you wanna build wealth with a higher income is to live below your means. So raise your hand if you ever heard this phrase from a parent or a teacher or a coach back in the day. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mm -hmm. And that applies to adults today. Just because you can go get a credit card doesn't mean you should. Just because you can buy a bigger house and the bank will give you more money doesn't mean you should. Just because you can go shopping for new shoes every single week doesn't mean you should. Wealthy people stay wealthy because there is a part of them that always remains a little frugal. They're always questioning those purchases. So instead of blowing every penny, maybe they you know, buy a more modest house. They pay for a reliable car and cash. They save up for their annual summer vacations or skiing or whatever they do, and they cash flow that trip. So I would say, Live with a little bit of wiggle room so that you can have some excess margin to think about things long-term. But again, living below your means and not spending everything is so crucial. All right, tip number five for high earners building wealth is to continue to follow a monthly budget. So just because you're a high earner doesn't give you an excuse not to budget. For so many people like, well, I just make too much money. I don't wanna feel like I'm like, you know, nickel and diming every little thing and all of this. Listen, you make too much money to, to not have a plan, okay? So making sure that you have a plan and track your expenses. Winston and I, we are on Baby Step 7 and we do this, you guys. We track our expenses every single month. Honestly, we do it almost every single day in the Every Dollar Budgeting app. So if you've not checked out this app, make sure to do this because when it comes to budgeting, the best thing that has happened for us is it has caused us to be intentional and it causes us some red flags of like, oh God, we spent more this month here. Even if we're living within our means, it's still a reality check of, okay, did we need this? Are we managing our money wisely in this? I mean, it really is accountable when you're looking at numbers on something like the Every Dollar app. It's so great. And again, it's a great place to go if you are needing to pay off debt, if you're needing sinking funds. I mean, the app has it all, which is so great. But I still, again, wanna be organized in all of it. So whether you're a high income earner or not, make sure to do this. All right, before I share my number one tip for building wealth with a high income, I wanna tell you about a faith-based alternative to health insurance that can make healthcare more affordable, and that is Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM allows members to share each other's healthcare costs, and it's as easy as one, two, three. Step one is choose your healthcare provider that you want. Step two is submit your eligible bills, and step three is to get reimbursed. CHM members take care of your eligible medical bills. With no networks and the freedom to choose your healthcare provider, CHM is the best option for Christians who wanna take care of their families and help other believers. Find out more at chministries.org slash budgets. All right, my number one tip for building wealth successfully when you are bringing in a higher income is to work with a professional. So having a financial mentor or a professional investment advisor is crucial when it comes to managing your money. So again, having somebody that does this professionally, I think is really important, especially when it comes to your investing, to sit down with them. And they, again, they live in this world. They, they are looking at everything from taxes and estate stuff. I mean, they're looking at the whole picture and it's just really wise to sit down with somebody. And then I do like the idea if you have somebody in your life who has been successful and you love the way that they manage their life and manage their money, you know, they could be a good resource just to ask questions. If you're new to some of this and you're trying to figure out how to do it and you have someone in your life you trust, go talk to them as well. But listen, I will leave a link in the description for you to get connected with a Smart Investor Pro who is an investment professional who can actually sit down and help you when it comes to the technical side. And again, I think it's really, really crucial. So make sure to check that out. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, check out my episode on wealthy people living paycheck to paycheck next. All right, you guys, as always, make sure to take control of your money and create a life you love.